What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So we still got a few quests left to do. And I would kind of like to start working on a few of those. So one of those was doing all of the extreme reactors, turbine stuff. Not that we're ever going to use this. We're making plenty of power directly from the passively cooled, or I guess, what, what do they call it? It's either the passively or the actively cooled. I think we have a passively cooled reactor. The actively one is where we pump water in and it gets turned into steam. Anyway, that's like one of the last quests of this section. Well, I guess that is the last quest of this section here. And then we got some other quests over here for the solar arrays. But yeah, the reactor upgrade thing, that's a quest that we can look at. It's just going to be a bit of crafting. And then we also have the draconic solar array. This is a retrieval task. We need one draconic solar panel. So I was kind of looking at the recipe for that draconic solar panel does require us to have four of the previous tier ones to get two of these, right? Uh, and those all have EMC and I do believe we made the tier eights already. Let's take a look at that real quick. Tier B I I I no. Uh, how about solar? Let's see. Where is it? Yeah. Solar panel tier eight, I guess tier is why I didn't search for that. So we have one of these already. No, we have two of those already. We need two more. One's got a charge and one does not. Okay, so let's grab some stars. Since those do have EMC, we can duplicate those quite easily. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn one of those. The one that has a charge just so it's not different and they should stack. So it looks like one of those is 17 stars, right? So we should get four, I do believe, from a stack of stars. No, we get three but we have four total now. I'm gonna want more of those in the future. In fact, what we should do, let's grab our uh, tablet so we can store that in the tablet itself. And if we ever do accidentally lose one of those, we can always make them later, right? So we can go and throw some stars in there and then look, now we can make another solar panel if we choose to, okay? Let's go and grab our stars back out of there. So this only shows you, I don't remember if I mentioned this, it only shows you what you have or what you uh the amount of items you can pull out that have the emc that you have stored in here so since we only have 256 these are the two items that show if we put in more emc then everything else that costs more does show here right okay so that's the way that works but now we have that learned we can always make these if we ever lose them we take all four of these we craft them to the next tier but now we don't have these to make the more the the draconic ones right so anyway that's how that works so in order to upgrade to this one, we needed four of those guys, right? So that's going to make us two of those. Now, if we look at the recipe going forward, we're going to need a total of four of the draconic solar panels plus a chaos shard in order to go to the next tier. So we might as well go ahead and make ourselves four more of these. So let's grab more stars. And then, yeah, we did in here. And then we can just do a stack of stars equals four more. Perfect. Okay. So now we're good to go. So we should be able to craft one of these. I pre-made up some wyvern cores and some draconic energy cores. We should have eight of these and two of these. So there is that. And then, oh, maybe it didn't finish up the other thing. Why did that not finish up? I'm pretty sure I told it to craft another one. I bet it's the whole slime ball with the, the server restarting issue, but there's a slime ball right in here. Aha. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go ahead and craft up the other one that we need to craft up, and then we should be able to make our second recipe, which will allow us to make one more set of these things. So these generate 131,000 RF per tick, right? So we're going to have nearly 500,000, uh, I guess a little over 500,000 RF per tick just from these two crafts that we just did. That's... You know, if we double that, we're already exceeding what our big reactor can do. <laughs> it gets a little crazy with these solars, right? So let's grab this draconic thing. Uh, wait, cancel. Um, shouldn't it be here? Draconic energy core? Is that not what I just created? Let's go back and take a look. I don't see anything here. Draconic. Now it appears. That's a little weird. Okay, so anyway, there's two more. So now we have four of these guys, which we should be able to use to upgrade the final tier once we get the Chaos Shard. We're also going to need some Awakened Cores, obviously, for that. But yeah, that's another quest knocked off, which is really good. That gives us a half a heart. Let's do Top Loot Chest today. All right, so one more quest done. 
Uh, we do have these that we're going to have to do, so I could just search uh, GEI for extreme turbine, and that should show us all of the, the turbine stuff. So we need a rotor shaft. Let's take a look at one of these together. So that is really easy. Iron and cyanide, super, super easy. Uh, we need a turbine rotor bleed. Oh man, this is all really easy stuff. And we only need one of each of these, a turbine housing. That might be something. So we have to make a turbine housing core legacy, which means we're going to need some graphite bars. Stella says to make like 10 of those, just so we have a few extra. I do, yeah, I was going to say, I do believe graphite's really fast to craft up. And then we also need to get ourselves a redstone comparator. What was it? Comparator, right? Yeah, comparator. Okay, and there's this guy. And finally, there's four housings. Cool. All right. So we got that done. Turbine glass. Very, very easy. Glass plus one of those housings. Uh, we need a turbine redstone flux power tap. Now this is one that would go into the housing for the turbines. Now remember the turbines are standalone. You just pump steam into them that your big reactor, extreme reactor is generating. Once you switch it over to an active cooling system, so you don't take power out of the big reactor anymore. It just generates steam. It's like, it just turns into a giant steam reactor is what it does. I guess we should make a few more of these things so we don't have to keep going back to it. There's that. Oh, I need mean, uh, graphite. Now those have EMC. We could just make a stupid amount of graphite, but honestly, we can just do this. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so there's some turbine housings. Now we're supposed to be making this guy. Cool. All right, so continuing on, a turbine fluid port. And I don't, does it, we have a Tesla power tap. I guess the steam is considered a fluid. Hmm. Yeah, because you have the fluid input and fluid output, right? Uh, the way that works is you input the steam from the reactor and then it generates water and power at the same time. Then you can have a closed loop system where the water, I guess, gets extracted out of there and back into the reactor, that's definitely a way you can do that. Okay, so let's see, what else we got here? Um, rotor bearing, turbine rotor bearing. Now, I was gonna say, I remember this thing being a little expensive. I think we need two of those. And then this guy, it's a little expensive, not really expensive, okay. I'm getting to the point now <laughs> where I want to auto craft this stuff, but honestly, it's not really worth it. Let's just craft up like, that many graphite bars. I think that's just going to help us out a little bit here. Oh, and then right. It's these things that go in the center. All of this stuff is EMC able. Even these, you know what do we have? Where are those? Uh, turbine housings. Let's just do this. We'll grab one star and we'll make all of the turbine housings. Yeah, now we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, so we have all the turbine housings now made super simple. Cool. All right, so which one were we making? We were making, we did this one already, right? Can we do a detect submit and will it show? There it goes. All right, so we need the turbine rotor bearing still and we have everything now. Cool. All right, moving on, we need... The turbine controller itself, that should be rather inexpensive. Uh, it does require plutonium. Okay. Easy enough though. And then finally we need a reactor coolant port. The thing we were, no, this is another thing. Re wait, 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 wait. Reactor coolant port, right. So when you put the reactor coolant port on the extreme reactor, that's where it turns it from a passive to an active cool. Reactor coolant port. This one. Okay. So pretty simple. Just need a piston. We have everything else. Good to go. Awesome. Okay. So that should be everything. That should complete the quest. And there it is. All right. So again, we aren't really going to be setting up the passively cooled reactor. We're doing that specifically to complete the quest here. And then top loot chest as well. Cool. So we only got one quest remaining on this tab. I think we are doing pretty good. So that's still waiting on the Chaos Guardian. That's waiting on the Chaos Guardian. Uh, Chaos Guardian. What else do we have here? All of these things are looking pretty good. And then 
the suspicious quest uh yeah we can start working on this and i think that's probably gonna be our next task because we want to get ourselves the ability to get the world breaker before we go and fight the chaos guardian let's pop two of these chests and see what we get here so we get an invar hammer and another invar hammer yes super awesome i'm super glad that we got two of those in a row very very good all right guys so our next quest that we're going to work on is going to involve making ourselves the infinity catalyst now we only have to make one of these as you can see these do have emc which is going to be quite nice so all we'd have to do is make one set a pattern in one of these energy condenser mk2s and just feed in nether stars and then we get all of them right so that's going to be our next task now these things aren't super easy they do require all of these singularities and I do believe the singularities are easier than they were in uh, Project Ozone 2 Kappa mode, I think. I haven't tried these yet. They might be the same difficulty. We'll, we will see. Then we also have to do two extreme crafting recipes for the ultimate stew, which isn't like super terrible, and the cosmic meatballs. So I think all of these have EMC, except for the raw meat ingots. That's going to be a thing that we're going to have to take a look at. And I guess the pile of neutrons as well, which we have plenty of those. Okay, Endus Pearl is another extreme crafting recipe. That's probably the first one we should work on. I thought these things had EMC before, but I guess it changes per pack. I thought in Project Ozone 2 they had EMC. Maybe they did, maybe they don't. I don't remember. We need to get over to this. I probably should put this on a storage bus so we have access to these everywhere. But let's take a look. Where are we at on this stuff? So we have 362 Neutronium ingots. That's pretty awesome. I think we needed four of those for the Endus Pearl let's go do this we need a bunch of ender pearls and then i think it was and stone so we'll grab two stacks of that two stacks of that all right let's see if we can make ourselves an endist pearl oh we're missing a star one another star coming up have i mentioned how much i love this button after playing project dozen 2 kappa mode best button ever awesome endist pearl done okay so we made one of those we can put the rest of this stuff away Okay, so we are 1 40th of the way there ish. I don't know how many is that. That's like, yeah, I guess that is 40 items. Okay, so moving on, we need an emerald carbon rod. We have that on auto craft. Pretty easy thing to do. It has to craft all these things, and that should be done almost instantly. Very good. Okay, so we need a grains of pizality. Pizality, Pizality, however you say that. So we need a pole sitting crystal, which is auto craftable. And I don't think that's going to take much time. Okay. So we can do that. We can also put that here and make a few extras of that. We'll just grab, how about a stack of stars and just make hmm, that many. Okay. So that seems good. We have all of those that we need to do. All right, so back to this thing. In order to do that, we needed to sag mill that. That also has EMC, so I guess we'll just do one. Then we'll make a few of them and just put them back in the system. So sag mill, just put one in there. Okay, so now we're all done. Yeah, let's uh, get a recipe for that too. So the greens, that comes from a processing pattern. One of these equals one of those in the sag mill. Oop. Sag mill. Why do we have 12 of those? Right, we have 12 of these because all of the ones over here are showing up, I think. Is that how that works? Why do we have so many sag mills available? Ah, yeah, because the interfaces are talking to these sag mills, so they show up there. All of these interfaces don't do not need to show up on the terminal. I don't know why I've never noticed this before that all of those are on there. But yeah, we can go and click these buttons so they don't show up in the pattern terminal because we are not crafting anything with these things. These are all automatically taking uh, the ores and stuff from the system and processing those. So now if we go over there and look at Sagmill, we should only see the one. No, I missed I missed a button on one of those. Dang it. Okay, I'll, I'll figure that out later. That's not a big deal. But anyway, that button is how you prevent those machines from showing up on your pattern terminal. Okay, or yeah, pattern terminal. Okay, so we have the greens now. We should uh, copy those. So let's grab some stars. I'll just do half a stack. I really don't think we need a lot of these, 
But I'll just go ahead and make a lot of these anyway, just so we never have to worry about them again. And I'll just throw them all on the ground. Okay, so there is one of those things. Awesome. Moving on. So now we need these coins. Now this is a thing we haven't had to mess around with yet. So these are made in the compactor with the mint augment, the numismatic press. Okay, so that's a pretty easy recipe for us to do. Uh, so we need electron plates, the redstone servo. Uh, we do not have electron plates on auto, so I'll just grab some plates and come down here and throw them in this compactor. I think we're gonna have to make a new compactor specifically for that augment. We can throw it over here or something. I think that'll be just fine. And then what else do we need to make this thing? Uh, Invar gear, which we don't have a recipe for. Actually, I forget. That's a crafting recipe. We can just craft that directly like so. Okay. So back to the, this thing. We now have everything. Perfect. Okay. So we need to make ourselves another one of these compactors. And do those have EMC? They do. So you can grab the one that we already have here. And I guess to save time, we can grab ourselves the tablet plus a star. Now, I don't know if that is going to make the resonant version or the basic version by learning this or how this all works, but we'll find out here. So if I get this, it does make the basic one. So I'm going to have to upgrade that. Okay. So that's good to know, but it saves us in having to craft another machine, right? Okay. So let's put this over here. And then I need to grab this one. Is that set to this? It is. Look, you can see all those wireless connections. It looks crazy, doesn't it? Shift right click on that. Right click on this. And then it gets powered up. Awesome. Okay, so now we got have that thing getting power. We're going to want to upgrade it. Do I have a kit in here? Resonant conversion kit. Perfect. We got that as a reward. Boom. Now it's resonant version. It's not gaining any more power. Now it is. I guess it took a second for that to realize. Okay, so we can throw this guy in there. And then we're going to want the uh, augments. This one. Auxiliary reception coil. We want three of those. Like so. And throw all those in there. Then it just makes it faster. And then this does the coin thing. Okay, so if we do storage mint. Press storage mint. Okay, so we want this one on mint. Right. So now going back to the infinity catalyst, this guy right here, these coins. So we can make 27 out of a block or three nuggets make one coin. Now it looks like we only need one coin of each. So I'll probably end up just doing an, an ingot and get three coins of each. Just simpler. So we are going to need copper, tin, silver, lead. Copper, uh, tin, silver, lead, tin, silver, lead. All right. So there's all of those. So we can just throw one in here and that does the thing. Cool. This one does the thing. You get the idea. Let me go ahead and do the rest of these and we'll be right back guys. Okay, guys, so we compressed a lot of those ingots into these coins, and I went ahead and I laid out all the recipes. Well, I guess the recipe for all the items that we've already collected and we already had. So we got a good portion of the recipe done, right? That's, yeah, that's a decent amount of these things. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to start working on the singularity part of those, which is a good another portion. I think it's like this many items, and we have those two, uh, the ultimate stew and the cosmic meatballs. So in order to make the singularities, we need to get ourselves a neutronium compressor. And I only realized this after I placed all these items that that is also an extreme crafting recipe in order to get this done. Um, so the dire crafting table, which we use to craft this, the extreme crafting does have EMC. So I crafted up one more and we have an auto craft in the system, but this is another item we should just learn, put some stars in here and just make some extra. So we just have them for later, right? I don't think we need 11 of those. In fact, I am very certain that we don't need 11 of those, but we will always have those available in the future should we need more. Okay, so we can place another dire crafting table. I guess right here should be fine. 
which are pick that item up. Can I fly back through? Thank you. So there's our other dire crafting table. So we're going to make a neutronium compressor. So we needed some crystal matrix ingots, which are EMC. We need some redstone blocks block. Of, does this thing have EMC? It doesn't. Uh, all right. So we're going to want to make a few of these, not just one. So let's tell the system to make some hoppers. Actually, you know what? All these things that have EMCs, let's just start making a bunch of them. So we'll make hoppers next. We'll make a whole mess of those things. Why is it not working? Hopper. It has EMC. What the heck? Okay, that was really weird. Uh, so we can place all those things away for now. Yeah, we'll just have all. Okay, okay. Enough of the hoppers. We made all of the hoppers that I want to make. <laughs> Uh, we'll just turn the rest of that stuff into stars or something. Okay. So we have all of the hoppers now. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, going forward, we need blocks of iron. We have 26,000 of those. I think that should be okay. Grab some of those. Grab those hoppers again. Like three stacks. We're going to try and make a few of these neutronium compressors at once is the general idea here. So the crystal... Matrix ingot. We do have some of those. Let's grab some stars. We're going to need a bunch more. All right. So you can go here and have a star. Okay. So that makes 20. We'll put a few stars in there. Uh, you know what? We're going to need more than that. I feel like I'm getting some lag here. What's going on? Anything? No. Okay. So hopefully that's going to be enough to get us where we need to be for right now. Uh, what else are we going to need? Redstone block. We have plenty of those. I'll just grab two stacks. That's going to be more than enough. So I think that takes care of the vast majority of stuff. We need neutronium blocks plus neutronium ingots. So one block plus this per. Now, again, I don't know how many of these we actually need to make, but since the infinity catalyst, requires one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think we should make at least 12 of those. So now we need to go grab some of our neutron ingots, neutronium ingots. We need to make at least 12, where, did I pass them? I passed them. <laughs> we need to make at least 12 blocks of these and then have enough ingots left over for everything else. Okay, so I have a lot of ingots on me. Hopefully this is gonna be enough to do what I want to do with these. Uh, all right, so we need 12 ingots, so that'll make seven. That'll make 14. I'll take two back, and then we can just shift-click those. Okay, so there's 12. I'll grab all those ingots back. Is that going to be enough? Maybe. Maybe. So the neutronium compressor, that looks like we should have everything in there to craft 12 of these things. So let's see if we can press the button. Oh, we only have enough for 11. What are we missing? Iron blocks. Iron blocks. Try pressing that button again. There it is. Now we can make 12 of these things. Cool. And they all stack. So there's another extreme crafting recipe done. And we made a whole lot of extra items for the future. Now these neutronium ingots, I do want to put back into our, our storage over here. I don't want to have them in multiple places just so we know where they all are. Okay, so we'll place that back there. I'll have to remember to go through the one by the villagers over here to get to it again. I can never remember where it is. Awesome. So now we have the neutronium compressors. Let's set one down real quick and just take a look at what this thing looks like. So it says an input slot does a thing to turn into nan percent. So that'll tell us not, well, nan means not a number. That'll tell us what the percentage is of this thing being done. So let's take a look at the first one here. So that's iron singularity. Now in Project Ozone 2, we had to use blocks of iron in order to make the iron singularity. And we had to use like 40,000 or 50,000 of these. I don't know if it's the same. So it's 17,600. 17,600. And that is 0.00568181814% complete. That's a lot of blocks. So I believe what I did in Project Ozone uh, 2 is I set up an energy condenser that was only outputting the block of the type that this needs, pumping in nether stars into that chest, and just waiting for this thing to produce an output, right? 
So this is going to be another one of those machines, another automation setup where we just want to set it down and never worry about it again. Probably down here, we have a lot of open space and we got to set down 12 of these machines. That's going to be just fine. So let's break this thing. Okay. So we need to set it down here. Let's find the center, which it should be right here. And then we'll place this three blocks away on either side, six blocks. So that's two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. All right. So now we need to get ourselves the energy condensers to start outputting the blocks. So I will go ahead and make a few of these energy condensers. I think we already have uh, some in the system. Energy condenser MK2s. Or I'm sorry, yeah, MK2s. I need 12 of these. Let me grab those and we'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so this is our setup so far. I just kind of laid out the cables. I haven't like configured anything. So we're gonna have an interface here that's gonna be providing uh, nether stars. So I'll go ahead and start getting that hooked up now. I'll just put a few available here, just a few extra stacks. Uh, so this will be providing nether stars. We're gonna be extracting that out of here. So we're gonna want some filters. Milter <laughs> filter. Let's grab two basic item filters. And again, we're going to need a star just to make sure that's what we're extracting out of this thing. So this item conduit on extract, we'll have a filter here set to whitelist stars. This will be uh, always active. And then the same thing on this side, we're going to have a basic filter here, always active star only whitelist. Actually, for right now, we'll leave those never active and I'll come back through here when we turn these on and I'll set that correctly. So these things down here, these all need to be set to insert only. So we'll grab our conduit probe like we've done before. Actually, I think I keep it in here. Yeah, so very easy one, just copy those settings. So all we gotta do is just click on each one of these things to set them all to insert only. And same thing over here. All of these things will now be set to insert only. And then on top of these neutronium compressors, we're gonna have to do the same thing as well. So these will all be insert only. So we're gonna be extracting out of the energy condenser MK2s right into these machines. Like so, perfect. Okay, so those should all be set. Uh, these right here need to be set to extract always active. So I'll go ahead and copy that setting and then we can paste that on all the ones that will be extracting out of the energy compressors just to make sure these things will be set up correctly as well. Cool. All right, so all of those should be good to go. Each one of the energy condensers I've already placed in the pattern. So when we start getting stars in here, it'll just output those blocks, right? And then those are all going to the compressors and everything will be happy. And that's the way that should be. So I think we're getting pretty close to where we need to be. Other things we want to do, uh, let's put these blocks away for right now. Well, actually, I, I guess we don't need them at all. We'll just put them away. Uh, so we need to get ourselves, uh, conduit speed upgrades so we need 15 per one i don't really know how many of these is that gonna be enough maybe so basically we want 15 in each one of these extracts so we'll be pulling a stack of items at a time right that will make sure everything goes fast as it's extracting um i do believe in project ozone 2 kappa i use translocators which was the fastest item transport these aren't as fast, but they're going to be decent. Like this will be running on a server. And at the moment, we only need one of each type of singularity. So we're probably over engineering this whole thing anyway. Uh, this will need stack upgrades to pull stack of stars at a time. This will need stack upgrade. Okay. So other things that I want to consider here, uh, when we start putting in nether stars, this is going to fill up full of items, right? And then this is going to start filling up full of stars. I'm not sure if I want to fill this whole thing up with stars. Cause that's a lot of, a lot of stacks of nether stars that are just kind of going to go to waste. So what I might end up doing is as soon as we start pumping in stars, this thing will fill up and then we can like fill up all these spots over here with something that takes up a lot less EMC. That's not valuable like cobblestone. So the first slot should always stay full of stars. And then that way we're not putting in whole bunch of different stacks in here. I don't think there's any way you can configure these things to only allow one stack. And if there is, you guys can let me know in the comments down below, or maybe the extract one over here would have a way of doing that. No, I don't think so. Okay. So we'll start pumping the stars over here. They'll start doing their thing. And then I'll have to quickly come back through there with some cobblestone, just something to take up all the extra space. I'll grab a few stacks of this just so we 
can get going here. All right, so let's do always active. So we'll start pumping stars in these things. Maybe. Maybe it's going to happen. Is it just pump into the first one? Okay, yeah. So you can see here, we're pumping in all sorts of extra stars that we don't want to have happen. So then it's going to come over here. Yeah, if I can catch this in time, my work will be a lot easier. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Stop clicking on the wrong thing. Go quicker. <laughs> okay, so that one's done. Nice, all right. So I'll only have to replace a few stacks of stars with all of this stuff. All right, so that one's a little bit more expensive. All right, that's good. And then finally, this one down here. Awesome. Okay, so now we should be producing all sorts of blocks, filling these things up. And the way this is set up, it should output up to a stack of these singularities. I'll probably not want a stack of each one, but you can see each one of these has a varying amount of items too. So this requires 18,400. This one requires 17,600. I'm not really sure how that's calculated. There's gotta be some reason for those numbers, right? I don't know what that reason is. Um, so also I see that this is only using like one item at a time instead of like full stack. So this is going pretty slow compared to what it could be going, which is unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I'll be spending time <laughs> taking these stars out, doing things like this. So we're not wasting all those stars and we still have those available for other things. We are going to be going through quite a lot of stars in this whole process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be needing a lot of stars in order to make all these singularities. Let's take a look here. If we look at our star supply, do we see that going down? No, we just have 25,000 in the system. Anyway, uh, so I can turn on the other side and do the same thing. I'll be a little bit more careful on that side, but we should be able to get ourselves these singularities. It just is gonna take a while. Once we have those, we are pretty much good to go in order to make uh, the infinity catalyst, which is EMCable, which is great. But yeah, we still got two more uh, recipes that we'll have to do, and we'll probably work on that next time. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.